Senegal with the free kick. They fire it in. It's not bad at all. It's headed away. A very clean header as well from the Flying Eagles. It's not a bad pass. That's uh, He's onside as well. This is great play. Oh, he's surely going to score. There it is. Goal number one and a defensive blunder. And I'm afraid that that was a giveaway. Awonai scores the opening goal for Nigeria. Neatly done. And that's another through ball. And Nigeria have a chance to get a second goal this time. He manages to get past the goalkeeper. There it is. It's goal number two. Well, the defence has been ripped to shreds. Awonai scores his second. And Nigeria are getting off to an absolutely fabulous start here in Dakar. And it could men are holding themselves steady at the back good chance for they got two players they got two oh is that a penalty no it isn't the referee says play on can he get a shot in there it is it's a goal for Senegal and it had to come from that man there City Sar and uh, it's as if the Nigerian defense just stopped playing the ball over to the left hand side now Nigeria increasing the pressure It's a good pass, well worked, and a good opportunity. Excellent pass, can he get a shot in on goal? Can he get a shot in on goal? Oh, it's a beauty! Well, that was just stunning from Matthew Efranui. He put it on his left foot and launched an absolute beauty. Excellent stuff there from the midfielder. And the celebrations are going off amongst the staff. Look at that. A bit of traffic in the uh, middle of the penalty area. C didn't have a chance. Look at that. Through the dummy. Got rid of his marker. And, uh, well, 3-1 it is. All right. So those are highlights for you from uh, the uh, Flying Eagles against uh, Senegal. 3-1, good start for Nigeria. But b before we go on to talk about the CAF Under-20 Championship and the results and the games currently going on, let's just quickly give you an update around that live game uh, that's happening uh, at the Old Trafford ground, Manchester United against Arsenal, is 1-1 after 33 minutes of football. It was uh, Nacho Monreal that put Arsenal ahead in the 26th minute, and guess what? Wayne Rooney replied almost immediately in the 29th minute. So as we speak, it's Manchester United 1, Arsenal 1 at the Old Trafford quarterfinals of the FA Cup. All right. The surprise for me is that mm. uh, Wayne Rooney is actually playing in a striking, uh, striking role because uh, for the past few games or so, uh, he's been playing deep. He's been playing deep. Uh, Louis Van Hal has been tinkering with his team, <laughs> playing him more as an attacking midfielder. So I think the fellow is now beginning to. I, I, I think it shows uh, Rooney's uh, versatility. Yeah, I, he's pushing him everywhere around the front. He's calmer these days. In the past, mm. we have told him tantrum that no. He's a striker, he wants to play as a striker, mm. as a striker but I, I think he's beginning to show, uh, maybe, maybe telling, uh, telling uh, Van Hal that you're probably wasting me in the position you're playing me. I mean, Falcao has to hit the high, uh, high notes. Uh, Van Persie has, has, struggled to, has struggled to deliver. And if you have a win, Rooney on the bench, uh, why not? He, he scored that goal off uh, an assist by Angel Di Maria. Off, uh, that's, that was the reply to Nacho Monreal's goal that mm. came off an assist by uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. So it's plenty to play for. Typically exciting game between two, the two teams. Over the past decade, they've served up uh, an, an entertaining spectacle. So mm. I don't expect this one to go, to go in, uh, in the opposite direction. Mm. All right, so once again, after 35 minutes of football, is Arsenal and um, Manchester United 1-1. One, one. United 1, Arsenal 1. We'll keep updating you uh, around that game as we go forward. So let's come back now very quickly to what we were talking about before we took that uh, break. The, the Flying Eagles uh, getting up to a dream start against um, Senegal. Let's bring you the results of um, opening day games uh, in Group A. Remember Nigeria is playing out from Group A and that's where the hosts are also playing Congo and Cote d'Ivoire as well. Okay, that's the result on your screen. 3-1 Nigeria over Senegal. Uh, Congo, Cote d'Ivoire playing out a one-all draw. That result suits us because all we need to book a World Cup ticket is beat Congo in our next game. And we are true to the World Cup in New Zealand. Whatever comes after that is a bonus. Yeah, Tony, um, I think first of all we have to commend this team that Manu Garba has uh, built. Um, over the past three, four years, 
this coach has shown that he has a philosophy. You know, a philosophy built on teamwork, mm. quick uh, recovery rate, you know, and functional fullbacks. And that, that was what we saw yesterday. They played 90 minutes of exhilarating football. You know, it was breathtaking. Mm. You, it was unbelievable. You couldn't believe that uh, these young lads started with the same pace and ended with the, in, in the same pace. So I think we need to commend them. And, you know, going forward, I think um, he needs to also be unpredictable. You don't play the same pattern in this tournament forever. He, because the, oppo because the, the opponents are also mm. studying. So he now challenges his, his technical abilities going to the next game. Mm. I, I think it's more about the quality in this team. Mm. And how this team can switch from one style to the other. People do not really know what their strength is at the moment. Is it counter-attacking football? Is it gentle build-up play? Whichever one you want, these boys are able to deliver. We saw two quick goals mm. of counter-attack. Mm. We saw the third goal that came off a build-up from the middle. So there's, there's plenty that you can, Sorry, that you can I, bring I, to this I, team. I, I beg to differ. If you watch them closely at the Super 6, they are a purely counter-attacking team. Absolutely. And they do it with devastating efficiency. They are really, really, really good at it. It doesn't take more than two or three passes before you see them at the edge of the opponent's box. And it works very, very well for them. So if it works very well, you, you are tempted not to change it. But like you rightly said, a lot of teams will understand this, tend to sit deep, and you cannot counter-attack a team that is sitting deep. You have to look for newer ways to break them, break, break them down. But kudos must go to, again to the Nigerian Football Association. The Super 6 was a fantastic tournament. And it exposed that, you know, on last week we said that the, playing against the Senegalese and the, and the Ivorians, who are big, tall, strong lads, might prove difficult to them because our team are somewhat, I won't say they're a team of hobbits, but they have average height. And, you know, having played against the likes of Gambo, Mohamed, Chinedu, Obiozo, I mean, they felt no, no, no sort of, um, how do I, they were not overwhelmed by their Senegalese opponents and they more than matched them. So I'm really pleased with what Manu Garba has done, pleased with what the technical crew has done. Please, what the players themselves have achieved, but it is not over yet. Mm. They haven't achieved anything mm. so far. A World Cup ticket is still the, the main prize. Mm. And I, I'm sure the coaches have noticed some of the lapses we saw in that game against Senegal. We were giving the ball away too many times in our crucial area. The coaches were needing to work on it. We Although the second badly. half, yeah, the second half was a lot better. But in the first half, we were giving the balls away in crucial areas. Some other teams could have punished us, and uh, the goal, the game could probably even have been high scoring draw because the Senegalese had plenty of chances. It was our goalkeeper uh, that prevented some of those clear cut uh, chances from going into the back of the net. So the coaches have plenty of work to do. The team is not a finished product yet. It's still work in progress and I hope they continue to get better game after game. But let's also tell you today Group B um, currently um, going on is the game between Mali and Zambia. Um, the last time we checked, it was still goalless, although I don't have um, the latest score. Maybe a goal has happened in that game, but the last time we checked, it was still goalless. But Ghana got off to a dream start, beating South Africa 2-0 in the first game of Group B. Uh, South Africa ending the game with 10 men. So the Ghanaians, who have been world champions before at this level, are looking good as well. Yeah, in 2009 in Egypt, the, the, with um, Andrea Ayer as um, captain, they won the World Championship. I think Ghana prepared very well. Today, today and I were mm. discussing that before we came on there. They went to Austria. They played Nigeria in, I think, a two-legged game. And um, they have, you know, a philosophy. They have a style. They in, have in the Ghana. same coach. Uh, and the, the same, same coach, coach who Tete. Won, who won the, the, the yeah. World Cup in, in 2009. 2009. It's, it's still there. You know, but for the South Africans, I mm. think, for me, I think they made a mistake going to Russia to go and prepare, to go and play in the cold region <laughs> when you, you knew that you had a tournament in the Senegal. tropics. In the tropics. So I, I think it was um, absolutely clear. Yeah, but there was enough time for them to transit between that cold region no, so and, and the uh, tropics. Uh, I mean, it was preparation for them and so they needed to take advantage so of so it. Yeah, 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 no, you're crossing that. They're looking for an excuse for, for South Africa. There's no excuse for this. These two different... Extreme weather. Two extreme weather. The winter of, uh, of, of Russia mm. and the heat of West Africa. They, two different they, time zones, they two went, different climatic... They went for a tournament. Nah. They went for the Commonwealth Games. Nah, nah. Football tournament. They, they should probably it was have an invitational go, tournament. They should probably have they, gone to South America. No, no, it, you go to where the tournament is. There's enough time for you to transit between when you come there and the time that this tournament started, they have almost two weeks, or I beg about almost a month of transiting. And you know that their weather in South Africa is also, it's almost yeah, the same so weather with, with Europe. It, it, but it's, it's always cold. It's, it's the same like staying in South Africa until about two weeks of the tournament, and then you come down to acclimatize. So it's, it's, it's uh, for me, okay, Senegalese players, nine of them, 
play in the French in the French league. But they've been in Senegal for a long time. Yeah. Now, but been, for this one, for they, this yeah, they played they played the warm up match where, with South Africa in Senegal. Yeah. They played the warm up match with, with South, Zambia yeah. as well. The South African team have also moved out of Senegal, South Africa a long time ago. No, no, so no. it's not an excuse that they went to Russia. They had enough time to transit between Russia and Senegal to and what, adjust. And what has together. happened to them now? And they, they are learning the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's um, um, go on very very quickly over the weekend as well. Our Super Sunday goals going to South Africa. Yeah. Preparatory tournament for me for the World Cup qualifier. And the good news coming out is that uh, Libya have pulled out. So Nigeria has qualified automatically for the African qualifiers to the beach soccer World Cup that will be taking place um, later in the year. In well, Portugal, where well, they, they they lost the first game and you know came back, made up with the second game. No, we won our we won our first game we against first game. Uh, we lost Ghana. Our second, we lost the second game, if I'm not mistaken. We lost our second game. We lost our second which game, which was the semi-final. Yeah. Was semi we beat Ghana, against, uh, Senegal. We yeah. lost second game yeah. against Senegal. Against Senegal, mm. we won the we game. Beat, we beat Ghana, but lost to Senegal. Senegal. To Senegal. Then and beat we South now Africa. We redeemed ourselves uh, against South Africa. South Africa. Nine yeah. goals to mm. three. Mm. Mm. These are the pictures of the game. But Senegal again. I mean. I thought that this was, but it's good because uh, at least we gained a pound of flesh for them in the under twenty, at the under twenty level. I mean, they got, <laughs> but but Senegal seems to be doing something right in beach soccer. Mm. Remember, they they played extremely well at the last uh, 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 tournament played in Lagos. In Lagos December, in December. I think they they, they, they won. Well, yeah. that was Cote d'Ivoire that beat us. No, at Senegal. Se Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire were the ones that beat us. It was Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, Sen yeah, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, okay, Cote d'Ivoire came to, yeah. But, but Senegal are doing increasingly well. No, they, well they, they are very in, good. They are the best. I mean, soccer uh, player in Africa at the yeah, moment. So they are the best. It's not, it's not surprising.